Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and talk about the iPhone XS and see how this phone holds up in 2023. Now one thing I will definitely tell you is, is that I think this phone is still pretty much worth it. There's been a lot of developments with this phone last year, but I think it's still a very good phone for the most part. It still has a lot of capability, and I for one, I'm still a massive fan of this phone. If you want to pick this phone up or some other phones I would recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of both these phones, you can clearly see there are some pretty cool things going on with this device for the most part because it still looks fairly modern for the most part. So on the front, we do have this pretty decent 5.8 inch Super Retina OLED display. Now it's still a 60 hertz panel, but I will tell you just like with the iPhone X panel, the screen on this thing still looks very good. And this phone came out in 2018, pretty much five years ago as of this point. So although it's not, you know, the latest and greatest anymore, it still has a pretty good panel. And I don't really think there's too much to complain about it from that standpoint. Now this phone did, you know, kind of succeed the iPhone 10. So visually it didn't look that much different from that phone. But I still think overall it still looks very good. And I definitely do think with the iPhone 11 Pro, that phone brought a lot more to the table. And that's why the iPhone XS kind of sits in this like middle ground between a super impactful iPhone and an iPhone that had a really big change like the 11 Pro. But I still think the XS on the front looks very good for the most part. On the bottom, we have our lightning port, which is really nice. On the sides, we have the stainless steel side, which looks so good on a phone like this. And on the back, we have this complete glass back. Now the back of this phone I still think looks very good. You know, we have IP certification on this device. We have wireless charging on this phone too. And we do have that dual camera setup on this phone as well. Now overall, if you visually looked at the iPhone XS, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and an iPhone X. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think the iPhone XS still looks very good. You have that rose gold color as well on these phones, which looked very sharp on a device like this. And I haven't really had too many complaints with this type of product. I think last year, Apple also found a way to go ahead and replace Face ID on this phone and phones after this and the iPhone 10, basically all iPhones with Face ID without having to repair the whole entire display. So that ended up lowering the cost of this specific Face ID repair you know, issue for these iPhones as well. And that kind of directly affected the iPhone XS, which was really interesting. We also got this tap to pay feature last year as well for contactless pay payments. The basically the lowest supported iPhone there was the XS2. So that was kind of another interesting news about the iPhone XS last year. Now moving on to the camera side of things, this iPhone does have a dual camera setup, like I mentioned, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, then a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. And on the front, we have a seven megapixel standard lens on the front. Now, I think this camera overall still looks pretty good. You know, it's probably not a big difference from its predecessor, but there were some cool things. I mean, having 4K at 60 on the back is still very, very good. I mean, even the latest iPhone 14 Pro Max still does 4K at 60. So it's not really that big of a difference there. On the front, having that 1080p at 60 frames per second is also another cool thing. And that is another big advantage that we have on a device like this. Pretty much just maintaining that 1080p at 60 on the front is pretty decent for the most part. Now, if you're doing things like taking Snapchat videos or TikTok or Instagram photos, those types of you know situations will be perfectly fine for a phone like this. Those applications are optimized very well for this type of device. So you're really not going to be messing out on too much in that standpoint. But even if you go further on, and if you actually look at something like the iPhone XS, this device still has a lot of capability behind that camera. You have standard photo and video modes. You still have portrait mode on this phone as well. It is missing out on a lot of things that we have nowadays as well, like an ultra wide camera, like cinematic mode, like stabilization mode that just came out, no ProRes video or anything like that, but still I think it's a good camera. And for basic, you know, people like myself who are just going to use a basic camera for basic things, this camera is more than enough in my opinion. So in that standpoint, it's perfectly fine. Now in the software and the longevity portion of how long this phone is going to last, well, this phone got iOS 16 last year. It is the second to the lowest phone that is pretty much supported as of right now. The 2018 iPhones in general pretty much are the lowest ones, which is kind of sad. It kind of crept up to us kind of you know fast. Last year it was like fourth in place, now it's second. So with that being said, I don't think this phone's going to end anytime soon. I think this phone still has a fairly long future ahead of it. If I had to kind of guess, I think the iPhone XS is probably going to end off probably around 2025. That's probably when this phone is going to end. 
So we still have, you know, a long future ahead with this product. It's not going to be discontinued tomorrow. So luckily for us, we're still in a pretty good situation. But this does kind of open the door of when this phone is going to be discontinued. So if we look at the last couple generations of iPhones, the iPhone 5S, iPhone 6S, Apple has kind of lasted that iPhone a little bit longer than its predecessors. The iPhone 5S lasted as long as the iPhone 6. The iPhone 6S lasted as long as the iPhone 7. So maybe the iPhone XS could last as long as the iPhone 11. Who knows? It's kind of up in the air. But that is one of those things that kind of keep in the back of your head that this phone could last longer than initially thought. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now in the performance segment, this is another pretty good area of this phone. I mean, this thing has that Apple A12 Bionic chip inside of it with four gigabytes of RAM. Now, in my opinion, having an iPhone like this as well with this performance is still pretty decent. So one thing I will say from its you know predecessor, the iPhone XS or the iPhone 10, had an extra gigabyte of RAM. So that's kind of a big performance gap. But also when you look at the iPhones of last year with the iPhone 13s, some of those iPhones also had four gigabytes of RAM as well. We just now finally got another increase for all the iPhones. So this one from 2018 also had four gigs, which is really cool. The Apple A12 Bionic chip isn't the fastest chip anymore, as most of us can probably realize, but it's not as you know slow chip by any means. I've played lots of massive games like Genshin Impact, PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, so many other games like that at pretty high graphics, and this phone can handle it pretty well. I've seen a lot of other people play lots of games on this phone as well, and even comparing this phone against the iPhone 14s, 13s, 12s, 11s, this phone has held up very well, even against a lot of the Android you know, competition as well. So I think this phone in the performance segment is still very good and even though it wasn't like a massive performance difference when it first came out from the iPhone 10, I think since then it's actually kind of aged into a fairly fast phone and I think that's probably one big thing to keep in mind as well, especially when you consider Apple has kind of been supporting this phone with more features overall on the iOS versions than the iPhone 10. Kind of makes you think of, you know, where this phone is in the powers, you know, department. So. And that standpoint, that kind of covers it up there. Now in the battery life department, kind of one of the sadder aspects for the most part, it's definitely not the you know best battery life of all time, but you know, it's still pretty decent at 2658 million hours, so it could be worse overall. So, and that kind of covers up everything. So to answer the question, I mean, should you still buy the iPhone XS in 2023? I would say yes, you know, I still think this is a very good phone for the most part. I will say though, if you have a little bit more money to spend, buying an iPhone 11 Pro would make way more sense in my opinion. This is a phone that is, you know, the 11 Pro is a very good phone, has so much capability for sure. I think the XS is still good. The only issues I have with it for the most part are the battery life and quite potentially when this phone is going to be unsupported with software. But other than that, I think it's still a pretty good phone overall and if I had to use this phone every day I would be more than happy with it for sure. So in that standpoint that pretty much covers it up for the most part. Again if you want to pick up this phone the links will be down in the description. Get them from there you can help support the channel at the same time. If you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in the comment section as well. Hit the like button that would be so much but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.